Hello, it's Friday the 22nd of July 2050 and it's been another extremely hot day across the UK. However, there is a glimmer of hope for some cooler conditions towards the middle of next week. Widely today, temperatures exceeded 36 Celsius with temperatures from Southampton to Birmingham exceeding 40 degrees and a high of 43 degrees in Worcester. This follows nine days with temperatures in excess of 30 Celsius in Scotland and 34 degrees across England and Wales. Little relief tonight either, with temperatures remaining at or above 20 Celsius for much of the country. And with the combination of high daytime and high nighttime temperatures, a heat health warning is currently in force. Little relief for those vulnerable to warmer weather. The advice is to look out for others, especially those in high risk groups. Close curtains in rooms that face the sun to keep indoor spaces cooler. And remember that at times, particularly at night, it might be cooler outdoors than indoors. As we start the weekend, high pressure over Scandinavia continues to draw hot air across the UK from the near continent. But relief is on the way as this low approaches later in the weekend and for the start of next week. Nevertheless, we start the weekend with that heat still in place. Temperatures quickly rising again across the UK. More than 37 degrees from southern Scotland throughout much of England and Wales, and more than 40 for parts of England and Wales, with 43 to 45 expected around Somerset, Dorset, Devon and Wiltshire. Again on Sunday, widely a very hot day. Once again, temperatures into the 40s. But a welcome change is on the way for the start of next week. Much cooler northwesterly winds arrive and Scotland as well as northern England seeing temperatures drop back into the mid-twenties for the start of the week. And then by the middle of next week, the cooler air finally reaches the south of England and south Wales. If this happens, it will finally be the end of a heat wave, which for 14 consecutive days has seen much of the UK higher than 30 degrees, peaking in the 40s. Now this has been an extended period as well with little notable rainfall over the UK. Such a prolonged heat wave can be a risk to the fit and healthy and not just to vulnerable groups. Remember, drink plenty of fluids, dress appropriately for the weather and slow down when it is hot. If you travel on the London Underground, you'll know how hot it can get in weather like this. Of course, this heat wave is part of yet another summer with hotter and drier conditions than we used to experience just 30 years ago. With the typical summer now experiencing high peak temperatures and more days over 30 degrees. For those areas that currently have hosepipe bands, I'm afraid there's little sign in the forecast of significant rain. In global weather news, we are seeing the continuation of an extremely dangerous heat wave in India. Temperatures in Delhi reached 48 degrees today and many places across the rest of the country saw temperatures in the low to mid 40s. In combination with high humidity, heat stress conditions have once again been extreme, meaning a real risk to life for people who can't escape the heat by staying in a cooled environment indoors. The authorities there are continuing their ban on outdoor working, so all farming and construction remains at a standstill. Thankfully, this isn't a real forecast. It is one possible scenario for how a summer heat wave could affect the UK in 30 years' time. Possible and could are words that express uncertainty. But don't let that lull you into a false sense of security. There is a range of potential summers we could experience in 2050. This depends partly on natural variations in climate year to year. But beyond 2050, the amount we reduce greenhouse gases today will have an increasing effect on global warming. Greenhouse gas emissions such as carbon dioxide have been rising in our atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution. In that time, the world has warmed by more than a degree Celsius, and if that rate continues, another half a degree of warming is expected by 2040, and possibly even by 2030. In the UK, further warming is also expected. If greenhouse gases continue to rise following a high emissions scenario throughout the 21st century, this middle line on this graph shows the most likely temperature rise by 2050, 1.7 degrees higher. The shaded area represents the full range of likely temperatures, four degrees higher by 2100 in this high emissions scenario. However, if greenhouse gas emissions start to be cut now and reduced to zero by around 2070, well, this graph shows 1.3 degrees higher by 2050 and 1.4 by 2100. 
Action now will make a difference by 2050, but an even bigger difference by 2100. Of course, more ambitious global emissions reductions could limit the warming even further. The UK has committed to bring its own emissions to net zero by 2050, and several other nations have also made similar pledges. The July 2050 forecast was based on a high emissions scenario. It's useful to illustrate how our weather patterns may change and what that could look like if we don't curb emissions. Of course, the UK's weather will continue to be highly variable. On average, in a high emissions scenario, winter rainfall would increase 7% higher by 2050. Summer rainfall would decrease 15% lower by 2050. Again, the shaded areas show the full range of likely values. Warmer, wetter winters, hotter, drier summers. We already have an idea of what this would feel like. February this year was the wettest on record. Last summer, the UK recorded its highest temperature on record, and summer 2018 was the joint hottest summer on record. Looking 30 years into the past and around 1990, the chance of seeing a summer like 2018 was very low. Now, in 2020, it's higher, but by 2050, it's about as likely as not in a low emission scenario, and even more likely if emissions are higher. Hotter, drier summers may not sound like a bad outcome, but as you saw in the example forecast, such widespread and long-lasting heat with little relief at night can cause a significant health risk, especially for vulnerable people. If no action is taken to reduce emissions, those problems will only increase in the future.